So tonight we're going to talk about one of the most powerful verses in the Bible. It just so happens to be one of the shortest. You know, when we think about how much God loves us, about how much Jesus cares about us, for me, only one passage of Scripture just, just pops out. Jesus wept. Shortest Bible verse there is, right? To me, it speaks volumes on how Christ feels when he sees us suffering. See, what we're going to talk about tonight was Lazarus. Now, Lazarus was Jesus' friend. He cared for Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Lazarus becomes ill, and he dies. And we're going to see how this affects Christ. And we're going to see how Christ was fully man, full of emotions. Let's read. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. You see his friends laying in this tomb. And the people that he cares about are all distraught. They're sad because Lazarus has died. And it says that Jesus was deeply moved in his spirit. And he wept. And he cried. You know, I imagine it's the same way when he sees us struggling. When he sees you struggling. When he looks in and he sees you sad. You're lost. You're lonely. You don't know where to turn. Maybe you're chained to an addiction. Maybe you're not spending time with the Lord. Maybe a loved one has turned their back on you. You're crying. Jesus is crying with you. You're his child. He cares about you. He wants to see you happy and prosper. But instead, you're lost and you feel alone. And when you feel this way, it moves God in his spirit. And he's sad for you because he is a good father. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Now, I want you to understand something. That second part, those Pharisees, those people that are looking on Jesus, those people that are saying, well, couldn't he have done something? Don't we do that same thing in our lives? Don't we reach a point to where we're so torn up about a situation and we say, Man, God, you could have fixed this. You could have stopped me from feeling this way. You could have done something for me, Lord. Why are you allowing this to happen to me? You have to understand. There's a reason for everything. And we're going to see in a minute, what was God's reason for this? Even though Lazarus and his loved ones are having to go through this situation, it still hurts God's heart. It says Jesus wept. Jesus cried. Tears ran down the face of our Lord because he was sad. And the same thing happens when he has to watch you walk through life's pitfalls and struggles. It hurts his heart. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. Can you imagine as Jesus walks up on this tomb? You know, he doesn't just trot up. He's torn up. He's crying. This is his friend. These are people he cares about. They're heartbroken. When you are broke down, Jesus will come to you. He'll meet you where you're at if you just ask him. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped up in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. You're dead. You're dead. Not only are you dead, but you're behind a stone. Nobody can get to you. Where you're at right now, the way that you feel, the sadness that has overtaken your heart, you're dead. But I know a Savior that will resurrect you. I know a Savior that will call you out of that tomb, that will bring you back to life again. See, what you're doing right now, that's not living life. You know, when you're 
so torn up by life situations, when you're so full of dread that you have to pull yourself out of bed tomorrow, that it's going to go on and on and on, when you're filled with that depression, God wants to take you out of it. God wants to save you. God wants to pull you to a place that you never thought you could be. A place full of peace, joy, and happiness. You see, our Savior can do that for you. He called the dead to rise. He brought them back to life again. Where you're at right now, where you feel dead right now, He wants to bring you back to life. There was a time in my life I was dead. Not just to sin, I was dead to the world. Nobody wanted anything to do with me. I didn't even want anything to do with myself. But Jesus saw fit to bring me out of that tomb. Jesus saw fit to bring me out of that depression. Jesus saw fit to bring peace to my life. And he seeks to do the same thing for you. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Jesus wants you to have life and life more abundant. Follow him. Call out to him. Step out of that tomb. Come to life again. Jesus loves you. I love you. I'm going to pray with you now. Come out of that tomb with me. Father, for anybody on the other side of this screen, anybody that's watching this video, I just pray that you raise them up. Father, we know that we can be overtaken by depression. Father, we can be overtaken by life's worries and by life's struggles. Father, help us to overcome them. Bring us back to life again, Father. Please, I'm begging you, resurrect us, Father. Bring us so that we can walk with you, so that we can glorify you and magnify your name because your name is the one that changes everything. Father, we love you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, you're taking the first step. Now let's take another one. Let's put one foot in front of the other. Take some time. Tonight before you go to bed, pray. Ask God to show you a better way. He's just waiting on you to ask. I love you, and we'll see you soon. Oh, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee.